Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about the probe on an Artillery Genus probe. My probe broke the other day, it got caught onto one of the extrusions on the plastic, we had one of those little bubbles, and it snapped off. So I wanted to get a new one, but I could not find any local companies or stores that provided or stocked the pin for this, and I had to import it from overseas, and I didn't have the time for that, I wanted to carry on printing on my fabulous machine here. So I looked at the probe and I noticed that the diameter was very similar to filament. So I had a look at my filament and sure enough the diameter is exactly the same. I cut off a piece of filament and uh, at 16 millimeters I measured out the pin, got it to the nearest round of 16 millimeters for me. I cut it off and I then stuck it in. So if you see here, if I pop this in, there we go. The pin works, okay. The solution worked for a while and everything was going well, but again, when it caught onto one of those little bubs, those little bubbles that come up every now and then on your print, it broke off again and it snapped. It bent and it snapped. So that was a temporary solution. I did that three or four times and each time it would snap and break. So I thought I'd need to find a different solution. So then I thought of a humble toothpick. Toothpick is a, is a nice strong, the wood is nice and strong, it's workable and you can make it work with that. So I took a toothpick and I cut it down to 16 millimeters and I tried to put it into the probe spot but it did not fit. But ever so slightly, it just would not go into the hole. I also tried a 3D printed version, okay, but this here... I don't like it. It's not as strong as I would like it to do. You can print this out and mold it down to the right side and put it in there. But I abandoned this pretty quickly. I'd rather use the toothpick because that's nice and strong. So what I'm going to do today is show you exactly how I made this pin with a toothpick and I got it to fit inside there. So firstly, you just want a decent quality toothpick. You get these toothpicks that are poor quality. This is a good, nice, round quality toothpick. Right, I take out my pen knife and we open up the pen knife. Just want to apologize for the gloves today. I've got some bad cuts on my thumbs that look bad, so I'd rather just wear the gloves and look better. Right, so let's carry on here. So I'm just going to take this and we are going to snip off a piece of toothpick. And then I'm going to take my trusty old vernier. Now, I've had comments in the past about my vernier skills that they're not very good. So excuse my vernier skills. This is what I do, how I do it. And uh, you know, you there might be better ways of using a vernier, but I like it like this, and this is the way I use it. So I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this onto spot onto 16 millimeters. Let me show on this camera. Where is it? So I'm gonna try to get it to 16 spot on. Get it as close as possible. All right, so if we get to 16 millimeters, that's close as possible to 16 millimeters. Let's get it in there. Let's take the knife and we're going to just score there. And mark it. So now, and then we're going to get it in there. And can you see it on that camera? I'm going to just gently push down until it cuts through. There we go. Now I've got my piece of toothpick that is going to fit. Let's just check it with the vernier here yeah it's 60 mils i'm going to clean up around the edge a little bit make it a nice clean so now let's get this to focus over here there's a nice clean point there and a nice clean cut but now when i try to put this into the hole you will see if i can find it it doesn't go into the little teeth that are in there there's a little uh, piece of metal that is folded around that it will not go into so what I've done is I've taken my pen knife and I just take it like this and I scrape. Scrape all around the toothpick. So we go all the way around just taking the smallest amount of the wood off as possible. We just want to reduce the diameter a little bit. So with doing this you just want to keep going around until you reduce the diameter enough so that it fits nice and cleanly and snugly into the into the receiver so now i'm going to try to push this in we want a nice snug fit there we go i've only taken a tiny little bit off and there we go i'm just going to pull this out i want to clean off the bottom edge here a little bit more to make it more round there we go 
There we go. So now, if we put this in, it fits nice and snugly. Now that we've got the pin in, we need to home it. So let's test it and make sure that the homing works. I'm going to press the home button and I'm going to press home. It goes and homes the X, the Y, and here we go, the Z. The pin pops out, the, the nicely pops out there, goes down and probes the bench, and away we go. Perfect. Very happy with that. You can also use side cutters if you don't want to use a knife. That could work slightly better, but I use my knife because I can clean it off and also clean off that edges. After it's probed and it's got the home position, let's level the bed. So we need to make sure that the probe distance that we've set is correct for our distance in our printing. So I'm going to put a trusty piece of paper in there, the old paper method. It's home in the middle. It homes and it will probe without the paper. Let's get that out the paper and then let's check the level. Right, there we go. Oh, this is very tight. So we're going to have to loosen this a little bit. So I'm going to probe my corners first and then we'll get this all sorted out. Right, so that's very tight. I am going to loosen that up a little bit. And feel it until it binds. So you just want to feel that binding. And as I'm binding, I'm going to be turning my knob a little bit. So it's binding nicely there. Let's probe this corner. Right, a little bit tight. Let's loosen up. Okay, let's get our binding. Also, remember when you're doing this, don't be touching the wheel when, you, when you're doing the, the movement because when you touch it, it pulls it down a little bit. As you can see, if I push it, if I touch it, and then I move, it's very loose. If I let go, it binds. We want that just to bind like that nicely. All right, let's do this corner here. Let's tighten that up a bit. All right, we're starting to bind. Again, not touching the wheel while I'm moving the paper. There we go, got a nice bind. And then let's, then let's get our last corner in. Also, don't be leaning on the, on the table, on the bend. Now, once we've done all four corners, you want to do it again. Because what happens is as you loosen or tighten, it causes a rocking on either side. So if you loosen on this side, it could uh, drop the side or lift the side a little bit as you're tightening or loosening or whatever. So let's go back to the beginning. I usually like to do three passes to make sure. See, now we loose again. So I'm just going to tighten this up just a fraction by loosening the bolt. There we go. Just binding, touching nicely. That's good come over again okay and again a little bit out we go again I'm happy with that go to the next corner that feels pretty close tiny little adjustment there we go you will get a feel for this as you use your printer more and more Right, now that we've done it past, past twice, we are going to go and do one more. Verify that's good. Show across. That's good. Come across. That's good. Come across. And that's good. There we go. We can go check our center. Bear in mind that it could be a little bit tight in the center, but that's fine. I'm happy. After publishing this video yesterday, Mark commented on the on the video and I really appreciate your comment Mark thank you I forgot one step we need to set the offset from the of the measured height to the actual nozzle being grounded on zero we have now we have now leveled the bed but now we need to make sure that our offset is permanently set correct very simple to do I'll show you quickly we click on more there's a button there called more after that we pre click on p0 p0 will We'll set the, we'll rehome the printer and set the nozzle to zero onto the zero point, which is obviously the top of our bed. We're going to set that quickly. 
and I'm going to put my paper underneath it now and I feel it's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the offset. So what we do is mine is very loose. It could be very tight. If it's tight, you lift the head up. If it's loose, you lower it. I'm going to lower the head. That is about right. So I just pressed it twice. It was very close. Obviously, I got my, uh, my little probe to the correct height. I'm just going to check it one more time. Let's just move it up. There we go. Let's feel how that feels. Yeah, that I like that. Then we're going to do an EEPROM save. That'll save it to the EEPROM and allow you to, next time you use the machine, it will be set to EEPROM save and everything will be fine. So that's it guys. We've now replaced the, the probe on our, on our BL Touch, on our touch center, on our Artillery Genius Pro. And our machine is running again in a few minutes. You don't have to rush out to a store. If you want to go buy the original probe, order it. Do this as a temporary thing to carry on printing. Put your original probe in. Make sure you level the bed again and all is good. Thank you guys for watching. Please consider subscribing and giving me a like on this, on this video if you like it. And let me know what else I can give you or what else you'd like to know about this specific machine or the Prusa at the back there. Have a great day. God bless. Thank you for watching.